Hi, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Welcome to today's Fixing the Money Thing program. We're going to be talking about Gary's new book, Your Financial Revolution, The Power of Rest, mm. the second installment in a series of the financial revolution. Yes, yes. So wonderful, Gary. And talking about rest, what does it mean to rest in the kingdom of God? Well, to understand from God's perspective what he's talking about, we have to go back to Genesis chapter 3, back in the beginning with Adam and Eve. Now, Obviously, we can all agree that back in the Garden of Eden, they didn't concern themselves with provision, sickness, fear, anxiousness, confusion. I mean, everything was there. Uh, there was no problem. There was peace. There was peace. They had purpose. They, they walked in harmony uh, until Satan showed up and then began to deceive them into believing God was against them. And Adam and Eve committed treason and essentially rebelled against God's kingdom, and in so doing came under the dominion of the kingdom of darkness or Satan's jurisdiction, which brought, as we know, fear and death dysfunction, and dysfunction uh, everything that was you yes. know, against what God said. Mm -hmm. So rest is referring to the opposite of what Adam and Eve found themselves in. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, when God confronted them, he says this to them, because you listened to, to Eve and they talked about this, you know, disobeying God. He's speaking to Adam. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you'll eat your food all the days of your life. It'll produce thorns and thistles for you, and you'll eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you'll eat it until you die. So the painful toil and sweat system is what came into existence. That is not rest. In fact, that's where we all grew up is in that system where if it's going to be, it's up to me. Jesus refers to this system that we grew up in as running. In Matthew chapter six, he said, the unbeliever who doesn't know God at all runs after the things of life because that's the system. Well, here's a good test, Rinda. If I would ask someone, say, you have to make more money this year. No option. You have to. How do they compute that? What kind of goes through their mind? Just get another job, work harder, exactly. try harder, sweat more, yep. make it happen. Yep. If it's to be, it's up to me, the yep. whole, yep. I'm in charge, but I have to make it happen. And it's a, it's a works mentality. But what we see also is it breaks other things. So people may muster the courage, the strength, the energy to work really hard in one area and something else breaks down yeah. because they neglect it. Because that's the earth's system. It's earth not earth set system. up for you to win, is it? No, it's a, it's a system of survival, mm -hmm. fear. Uh, we all grew up with worry. We are professional warriors from our birth. And so the, the hunt for provision drives us. And without really realizing it, we make our decisions around how can I find provision or if I have it, how can I make sure I keep it? Right. Because the only escape out of the, the rat race or keeping my nose to the grindstone is having more than enough money. And that's why you and I have said for years, until you fix the money thing, you'll never find out who you really are. Right. Your destiny's there, but you're too busy with your nose to the grindstone. That's right. Adam keep was Keep working, yeah. going, going, going. Adam was created not to run after provision. That was already created. In fact, man was created at the end of the sixth day to live in the seventh day. Mm -hmm. And he lost the seventh day. And now he's running after provision by his own painful toil and sweat. Quite frankly, everyone's tired of running after provision. Waking up in the morning has this weight of having to try, you know, to find provision. Thus, we see things like the lottery spring up that catches people's attention. We see programs like everyone wants to be a millionaire drawing attention because people are looking for an escape out of this or rest, if you will. They're looking for rest out of this rat race system of survival. Right. And in your book, you talk about the Sabbath rest, living in the Sabbath. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you, Drenda, this is probably the most important thing someone can learn uh, that literally changed our lives. As you, as you remember, I'm just saying that for our viewers' sake, for nine years, you know, we lived hand to mouth, pawn shops, uh, in debt, panic attacks, you know, antidepressants, we everything toiling. broken. We oh, working. we worked all the time. But it's, it's kind of like that Muhammad Ali, you know, the way he would win 
in his fights was that he would let the other person toil and beat themselves up, punching at the air and working and working and working. It's mm -hmm. called rope-a-dope. And the enemy loves to rope us and into being the And he would just sit back dope. against the ropes and Right, yeah. And he would regroup. rest. Yeah. He would rest. And then he would come out, you know, when he made his punch, it was powerful. Because he was resting. Right. Yeah. A man at rest is at his best. So. Yeah, that's true. So how do we rest, Gary? Well, when there I'm are, so glad you know, you're, you're talking about the question. toil, the strife, the struggle. How do we rest when there is all this pressure? Everybody would well, say, Gary, that sounds great. You know, the word of God is great, but I need money. Exactly. And we found ourselves there. Nine years. Nine years. And finally, we got so desperate. I mean, all of our friends cut us off. You know, it's a true story. If I called my dad, the first thing he said to me on the phone is, how much do you need this time? I mean, it was horrible. And it wasn't that we weren't working. Oh, we, we, were worked, 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 we were toiling. We were toiling. We were trying to do it in our own strength and struggling, thinking and knowing that, you know, there's something more to it, that God wants to bless us. But we were kind of asking him to bless what we were well, doing. Well, we didn't really know then. Right. We weren't paying but him first. when we cried out after nine years, getting everything's cut off, we, we need help. And God said, it's because you're in this mess because you never learned how my kingdom operates, how my laws operate. And quite frankly, he's right. I didn't know what he's talking about. I mean, I'm going, I was going to heaven. I had an Old Testament degree, but I didn't know what he's talking about. What do you mean your kingdom? And so in the kingdom, we're going to find rest. You can get an example of the kingdom just looking at the Bible in Luke chapter 5. You see Peter, James, and John fished all night, labored, and caught nothing. Jesus comes along, borrows the boat, tells them where to fish at. They catch so many fish, the boat's about sank. Peter and James and John, the Bible says, are astonished, so astonished, they leave the fishing business and follow Jesus. How did that happen? Kingdom, earth curse system. How do airplanes fly? Airplanes do not cancel the law of gravity. They supersede the law of gravity with a new law called the law of lift. Now, the earth curse system, the kingdom of heaven actually supersedes that if you understand it. So when we began to understand the kingdom, things changed immediately. It's like walking or flying a jet to California. There's one way that's much better. And in two and a half years, we paid all of our debt off. We began to pay cash for our car, build our dream home, paid it off. I mean, all these things happened. And then happened. started helping people, which is helping the greatest people, part. Uh, began to have money to give and help people. And our life changed drastically. So drastic that it was just like a shock, really. It was just, we were shocked by it. So when the Bible talks about rest, let's answer this question. In the Old Testament, what could they not do on the Sabbath? Work. Labor. Painful toil and sweat. Right. So the Sabbath was the seventh day. Why did God give Israel the Sabbath? After Adam and Eve sinned, why did he put the Sabbath in place? He wanted to talk. He's giving an example. Essentially, he's saying, look, I'm, here's a picture of what life is supposed to look like. And uh, I'm going to someday restore this to man. Yes. And in that, in that covenant time before the new birth, they took that day to honor God, put him first. And it is, it is, to me, it sort of looks like the tithe because they take a day, they dedicate it to God, they rest in God, they seek God, they don't work, they don't strive, they don't toil. And the rest of the week, they're working, but now they put God first and they're seeking first the kingdom. And now God's, and then when Jesus comes along, he gives us the Sabbath. I love how you share about that. Yeah, we've got to talk about the Sabbath, but I, I think we'll come back to that in just a minute because I want to dig into it a little deeper. But the, just remember this, that the Sabbath day in the Old Testament, they couldn't work. And like you said, it forced them to stop this running. Because remember, they had nothing unless they had this mindset, I've got to work, right? right. And that's how they, a provision was acquired through labor, painful toil and sweat. So they would just keep going. So God said, okay, stop. Like you said, stop on the seventh day and focus on the Lord and stop this running. And remember, he's one, one day going to restore this Sabbath day of rest. But what does that mean? Like you said, when we come back, let's talk about the Sabbath rest. A lot of confusion out there. What is the Sabbath? Which denomination has it right? Or do they have it right? Or what day is it? What is the Sabbath really telling us? You're going to find the answer may surprise you when we come back on Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. 
Visit GaryKC.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.